So those of you that know me, or have at least been following me on Instagram since back long before the YouTube days, know exactly what this is and are probably super excited to see it right here. And those of you that don't are probably wondering what this ugly looking piece of crap is doing hooked to my shiny new truck. Well, we're gonna get into all that, go over it here in just a minute and, uh, and check this thing out because it has been a while. This is a, I don't even remember what year, BWS air powered ramp trailer that I custom spec'd out uh, quite, quite a few years ago to exactly what I wanted for the type of work I was doing. And it still to this day is the only one of this spec. And uh, after getting it, using it, I, everything about it, I loved the spec and how it all worked out. Uh, I ended up having to switch to a different style of trailer for a different type of work. And uh, I sold this to a guy way up in Oregon in another state long away where, where I'd never see it again. And then, uh, and then I moved to the same town and I see it all over the place. And finally, it is hooked back to my truck. So this basic design of trailer, BWS, has been making for quite a while. Um, they're the manufacturer, they're up out of Canada, uh, New Brunswick, I believe. And it's shaped like a step deck, making it good for hauling freight and stuff like that, but actually designed to haul equipment. Uh, so it's a very versatile trailer. You can do a little bit of everything with it. And I decided to try to take that versatility up a whole nother notch when I spec'd out this trailer and the specs on this one are quite a bit different than anything else they make. First of all this is a 43 foot trailer to the end of the deck right there not counting the ramps because those fold up I'll show you in a minute. Uh, they've never did a 43 foot trailer before this one and I don't think they've ever done one since but the reason for that length was very very specific. See I hauled heavy equipment into a lot of very stupid and rough places obviously with a much shorter truck than that one and that 43 feet was just long enough to meet bridge law in california where i ran this trailer and bridge law or bridge length is from the center of that last axle there to the center of the first axle in the group there and that distance with that that fits it would be slid forward more and that would be back under the trailer a little bit uh that distance between there and there just barely met bridge law as a triaxle group. Now basically what that means in layman's terms is on your overweight permits, uh, you get max uh, axle group weights as long as there's a certain distance between the axles. And uh, with the truck I had, I could get 46,725, I believe, pounds on the drive axles. And with this trailer, oh, it's been so long. 58,800, something like that on the triaxle. And if there was any less space between those groups, either this group or that group would get cut down significantly. So even just a few inches shorter right there would have dropped a lot of weight off of that. Now, the other thing I was very specific about is the spacing between these three axles. Uh, that also plays into bridge law because the bridge law distance uh, as a triaxle behind a tandem and as a tandem axle behind a tandem is very different. So that's a lift axle right there. And with it down, making this a triaxle group, we're like dead on the minimum. And with it up, the bridge law requires a bigger spacing. But the distance between that axle and that axle makes it so when this is up, you're again just within a few inches of the minimum for tandem axle bridge law. And you're still able to get 46,000 again, I believe, on these two axles right here with that one up. Meaning, basically, if you can fit it on this trailer without being like way too tall, you're legal to haul it on your annual overweight permits. Now, luckily, with it now being up in Oregon, that bridge loss spacing is very, very similar, and this actually, this distance works out up here as well. So, again, it's as short as you can go while still maximizing your permitted axle weights on your overweight permits. Now, there's still a pretty good bit of distance from there to there, which there needs to be to get your, your permit weights. Uh, and I still need to get in some very tight places. So after I got it delivered from BWS, I tore into that whole axle group and I did some, some custom stuff in there that makes this trailer act like a steerable trailer without any of the axles actually steering. And I'll cut some clips in here. I'll have to dig back through my Instagram and find of how this thing would go around corners and the whole back end of this trailer would just move right around to the outside of the turn 
and act like a steerable to get into some crazy tight places. Now on the back here, this has a bifold ramp setup. You'll see in just a minute, and Rusty is wanting to be right here too. But you'll see how these kind of scissor and fold up like that. And that gives a super, super low loading angle to where you can get little scissor lifts, warehouse forklifts, all that stuff up it super easy. Uh, but yet this trailer is still rated and can haul a D7 dozer, a 325 excavator, or anything like that, which makes it more versatile than pretty much any other equipment hauling trailer out there to go from 325 excavator, to little warehouse scissor lift, to load up pallets of freight on it and haul freight too. It's kind of the do everything trailer. Then this specific deck length here, back to where the ramps stand up, uh, counting in this little bit of tail section here, was specced to be just long enough to fit uh, 10 wheel dump trucks, water trucks, a standard road tractor. That one might be a little long to go on here, I'm not sure. But this, truck, this, or this trailer did a lot of uh, towing type of work towing broke down trucks because they would fit so perfectly right in that section and it was a super nice and easy ramp to winch on up there and there's like a little receiver winch mount up there on the front of the deck so how these ramps work and uh, i've been warned that they move a whole lot faster than they used to one because half their weight is missing right now and two the spring broke in here and it just got kind of temporary patched but uh, you open the air valve here which inflates this airbag that's normally covered up. And now when those are adjusted just right, that actually comes off the ground with it and then starts to come in so it doesn't drag on the ground like that. And there you have it. The ramps are folded up. Now you take this piece here. What the heck? Oh, there it is. That comes over here. Chain drops in here. And there's a safety so that if you lose air or you blow that bag right there or anything else, the ramps can't come down. Uh, same thing on the other side. This little chain bar right here. Put it in everything's safe now these ramps here were another kind of custom spec deal i did uh, they didn't make this width of ramp and i don't know if they even do now but i very specifically ordered that width of ramp because that's wide enough for uh, scissor lifts and stuff like that to be able to safely go up each ramp obviously when there's deck boards in them with plenty of room but leaves enough of a gap in between here that the boom of a long reach excavator will fit between and is able to stick out the back of the trailer. So the fact that you have these ramps up in the way right here does not stop you from hauling long reach excavators or big like 80 foot man lifts where the basket needs to sit out here. This was very specifically designed spacing right here to fit those booms. And then the other thing you saw is as the ramps came up, it inflated all the air suspension. So this trailer, when you open that valve to drop the ramps down, it automatically dumps the air bags and sets the trailer down just to help with that loading angle and make it just so smooth. And then when you air them back up, this all picks up. And then in here, uh, this would be your suspension dump valve. 
to dump all your airbags while the ramps are still up in case you're being unloaded by like a forklift or a crane or whatever and you don't want the trailer moving around. This one should be your lift axle. Oh, there it goes. So now that picks up in the air and you just become a tandem axle back here. Or you drop it down and you're a triaxle. And then uh, this trailer is also wired up to the front where you can raise and lower that axle from the cab if the truck is wired to do it. So this right here I added, it's just a hitch receiver. I put a receiver mount winch in there and then just run it down to the batteries on the truck. But on this truck they're way up here. So it's a bit of a stretch, but uh, can still be doable. And uh, fun fact, when I welded that on, I melted the, uh, the supply line where it runs through there because it was touching the bottom of that and I didn't think about that. So if you look at the frame here, you can see it is way beefier than your average step deck, uh, even though it looks like a step deck. And then it's got all the kicker bars that come down off the cross members that tie together in between with the center bar so that when this is being pushed down from weight out here, that gets down, pressed down into there. It's a transfer plate there cross member crossed up to the other side so that the two sides are like fighting each other and helping support each other. Then if you want to load a, a piece of equipment or something up here, you open this fancy box. And uh, I put this here way back in the day. Uh, this pressure gauge here correlates with this here. Uh, 65 PSI as a tandem on this gauge is 34,000 pounds, which is legal weight as a tandem. Uh, 88 PSI on this gauge is 45,000 pounds, which 46 is max. So I think I just put 45 because that was an easy number. Uh, so that's your max permit weight as a tandem. And then 75 PSI on this gauge is 58,000 pounds as a tritem, which is, uh, you know, with all three axles down, which is your max uh, triaxle permit weight with that axle spacing. So anyway, you want to load a piece of equipment up here. Take this open that valve and look at this that ramp kicks up you come back here open this latch pull your stand down come on pull that back there dump that back down this sets against it and now you have a nice ramp right up there under the top it's supported by this and there's the airbag right there that runs it. You want to drop that back down. You supply air back to that bag. This will lift off of here. Maybe. I've been doing a bunch of stuff with the air. I'm probably about draining the tanks in this thing. But oh yeah. Then you close your latch. Close all that up. And that airbag will deflate. And this will just lower right back down into the deck. High speed. There you go. Now, I added this chain tray here, and it used to be all laid out with like color coordinated chains for different lengths, and you just grab what you need, pull it right out, slide it back in, and then the binders actually have this binder rack here until it hasn't been used in forever, it's all frozen up, but you feel to put a binder in, it would slide through past this latch and then couldn't come back out because this latch would fold down and only folds one way. And to get it out, you would hold that latch up, pull your binders out and let it drop back down. So then those chains and binders. This trailer has a chain and binder box right here, but this was kind of a fail in the design manufacturer part of it because that box is not deep enough for a standard like 3 8 to half inch binder to sit in there and close this lid. The handle's too tall. So that was kind of a, a bit of a fail right there. You can put chains in there, but no binders. At the back of the deck is the same thing. Uh, binder box back here. 
Uh, see, this one fits because it's the uh, folding handle binder, but again, a normal non-folding binder won't fit in this and still allow this to close. These are some stands I made way back in the day, and those sit right here under this. And then when the suspension drops, that sets down on them. So when you're loading a big, heavy piece of equipment, it just gives some support to that tail. It's not 100% necessary, but it helps. Now, like I said, I sold this trailer to my buddy Matt up here in Oregon. Well, he became my buddy since then. I didn't even know him before I sold it to him. But uh, he's had it for a very long time. And yeah, it doesn't look quite like... It did when I had it, but to be fair, the only time it was ever shiny and pretty was the day I bought it and the day I sold it to him. Uh, two things Matt hates very badly. Uh, one, deck boards. Two, scissor lifts. So he figured out that uh, if you don't put deck boards on the ramps, you don't have the whole scissor lift. So that's kind of a two birds with one stone sort of thing there. So he just, he took all the deck boards off the ramps and uh, Matt owns Tumalo Transport. He's got a bunch of brand new and fancy trailers and drivers and trucks in them and all that stuff. They, they go haul all kinds of stuff. This is the trailer Matt tows personally when he needs to go out and do stuff. And then he doesn't have to haul scissor lifts. The drivers can go do that. Maybe one day it'll get some deck boards back in there and, and a fresh little paint job on it. Now this here, this was 100% my fault. Uh, I originally, you can see right here where it was, I made this center section hinge where these two pieces flipped out and opened up so you could take the knuckle of an excavator and stick it down between the cross members and then um, get the boom height super, super low up there for getting under trees and stuff like that. That works very good if you're very careful. And if you're an owner operator pulling your own trailer, great idea. As soon as you hire drivers to go pull your trailer, which I had a driver uh, pull this trailer and Matt of course has drivers as well um, sometimes things happen and they aren't quite centered with that knuckle of the excavator or they move the excavator or anything before coming straight up and out of there and then you bend cross members but that's not anything structural that's not going to hurt the trailer especially since nothing rides right there so put some new deck boards over it. it'll be fine now what you're all wondering why do I have this trailer behind my truck well uh, I got a call for a big old lifted truck uh, way out east of probably 100 miles east of here um, broke down need to get it towed back to town my big rollback is still a month later forever broken down apparently and never gonna get fixed I don't know um, so I couldn't go get it with that I have this shiny new truck sitting here but I have no trailer to pull behind it or anything to do anything with so I called up my buddy Matt I'm like hey uh, my old trailer that you have is it happened to be sitting right now because the good thing about Matt like running his own company and using this as his personal trailer for when he goes and hauls stuff is he spends most of his time running his own company so this one's sitting in the yard a lot so he said yeah it's sitting here come grab it do what you need uh, the truck I gotta get does fire up and run so I'd be able to drive it on here it just doesn't run very well um, so I went and got it yes there's no deck boards but the truck I'm going to get has 37 inch tires on it so that doesn't matter uh and it let me go get that job done so i went got the trailer got it back here cannot get back a hold of these people they won't answer the phone so we're sitting here waiting for them to either answer the phone or go do it tomorrow or i just take this back over to matt's and drop it back off we'll see i'm not sure how that's going to go just yet but that is why it's hooked back to this truck now of course that begs the other question uh what am i going to get for behind this truck uh i do need to get a trailer for it and I would absolutely love another trailer like this. Um, I would want some things done a little bit different. Uh, a few of the things with this trailer that aren't quite right are my fault in specking it out or just little detail stuff. And a few are BWS with some learning curves on whole new spec and all that. Not, not really their fault. Like uh, this was kind of a one-off trailer that they built for me to my specs, but there's some structural things that need to be changed and there's some detail stuff that need to be changed. So since we're talking about it, let's go over that stuff too. Number one, uh, I would probably go even shorter on the length and ditch the third axle and just do an even shorter tandem axle. Like maybe this is a 43, probably do like a 38 or a 40 um, total length trailer and just a tandem. 
to be like an extra short get around really good trailer still be able to haul a decent amount of stuff on it yes you're going to get cut down on your permit weights because you're losing your bridge distance here but i have people like matt with big heavy haul trailers who can haul the heavy stuff for me and then i don't have to really pull that hard with this one which would be nice number two this piece right here uh, this is an extension so that when the ramp comes up obviously it travels in an arc it comes back from this so this is to meet up to be your transition piece um, I would not have them put this weld right here. They didn't weld across the bottom, which is good, but this vertical weld uh, is gonna always, always crack because the trailer flexes back and forth. This steel box is incredibly rigid. Something's gotta give somewhere. This weld will constantly crack. You'll never be able to get it to stop doing that. So just this weld up here in the top would be plenty. I would stick with this short five foot ramp. Their standard option is a 12 foot ramp that comes from way back here. Again, makes like the ramps at the back, a super smooth and easy transition to the top. But when you're loading um, backhoes or little single axle dump trucks or water trucks and ramping them up on the top so that you could fit two, if that ramp started way back here and went long, the whole truck's gonna be up on there and you're gonna be over height. By having the front end go up and the back end stay down uh, up to that point, you end up under height still and you can double up on stuff. So I would stick with the short ramp. The D-ring rub rail stake pocket package I did worked out great 100 percent stick with that but this section right here um, is where i think it was kind of the structural fail from the manufacturer you've got this big rail here and then big rail here with these big cross members but over the tires uh, there's nothing but this piece of plate right here to support this whole section so as you can see it bends down under a really heavy load this and i believe on their new trailers this is boxed or something right here and uh, makes this a much more rigid so it doesn't do this this is actually where a machine slid off the side and that really put a hurting on this but if it had a rail all the way through here this wouldn't happen the other thing that was a major design fail from a structural point of view is this last cross member right here before this transition which when a track machine is going over and teetering takes a hundred percent of the weight of that track machine had no kicker support down to the frame it was just free floating up there so you see this support here um, this trailer is about a week old i tore the whole back half of this apart and welded in um, this kicker support down there which ties right into the cross brace for the ramp airbag back there and goes to the other side um, I did bend this a little bit before I did that. I couldn't I straightened it back out as best I could but the two back corners here of that one are a little tapered down It's just how they are if it would have had that support in there from the beginning that wouldn't happen Another thing I would not do again is the bifold ramps. Yes, that makes a super long transition, but it's almost too long I would rather this be another foot and a half two feet longer and just a single one drop down ramp uh, it would give plenty of uh, low load angle to get stuff on it, but it would also allow you to drop them down onto a loading dock or different elevation of terrain or something like that to be able to get like a forklift out of a warehouse or something. So I wouldn't do that bifold setup again. And this, this bar needs to go. You can see it's bent and exactly how it gets bent is when you pull it out of here, you're supposed to set it right there. Your chain hangs down. But one, if a machine slides off and hooks this, you're gonna bend it. Two, if you're not paying attention and it drops down like that, then you flip your switch to drop your ramps and the trailer drops the airbags, it just buckles it into the ground right there. So this should not have this bar and then a section of chain. It should just be a section of chain from here to here. When we take it off, the chain can just hang down kind of like it does right there and then Nothing would matter. It's just a piece of chain that's gonna sit on the ground as this drops down, no big deal. I would keep the exact spacing I did with the exact ramp size I did because that did work well for scissor lifts here and boom, sticking through there. Ooh, ooh, I know the other thing. Uh, this ramp switch, this probably bugged me more than anything even though it was the most minor of all of them and I really could have fixed it myself if I really wanted to, but the dump switch for the ramps needs to be on the other side of the trailer. Because uh, how this works is you get out of your truck you walk back down the side, you take this chain off, then you go around over here like this, take this chain off, then you gotta go back around over here like this, 
and dump your ramps. If it was on that side, you could get out of your truck, walk by, take this one off, take that one off, flip your switch, ramps go down. So that, so that, that should be on the other side. Then of course, as I said, with the sun right in my face right there, uh, those uh, chain boxes up here and back there uh, need to be a whole lot deeper or somewhere else on the trailer because that would only work if you had all folding handle binders, but I, I am bothered by the folding handle binders. I don't really like them. Of course, that's what's on this trailer if I end up having to go use it to do this, this recovery off out there in the desert, but, but that's fine. Ooh, I remember what else. This box right here, this is all your suspension controls everything back here. This box was mounted to hang way down here and if you're gonna drag a trailer on the ground, this is where it's gonna drag the worst. You can see the holes right here where these two airlines used to come through here and into the box right there. And the two right here where these used to come out and go through there. Now that hung down and when I first got this trailer delivered, uh, after order inspecting it out and waiting for it to get built and all that, I looked at that and go, I'm gonna hit that so quick. And in all the time I had this trailer and all these stupid places I took this trailer, I never hit that box, not once. And then I made the deal to sell this trailer to Matt. It was done deal, his trailer. I just had to get it delivered up to him. We were waiting for the day we both had available. And I got a call for a, an excavator haul. And uh, my other trailer had a flat tire. So I was like, I'll just take that trailer. Yeah, it's sold, it says, but like, it's an excavator I've hauled on a million times. It'd be fine. What did I do? I railed that box on a curb and mangled it all up underneath there. So that was not fun. But uh, the other one that needs to change is this grader blade right here that basically just drags the ground and grades the road underneath there. I get it has to hang down low because the drop axle bag right there swings down, but there needs to be some other way of doing that, that it's not hanging way down off the bottom right there. That's, that's also a constant issue where you're having to bend it straight and weld up cracks, all that, or just leave it back out of the way, I guess. But overall, this is an incredibly handy and versatile trailer and what it allows you to do from, from decent sized equipment. Like I said, D7, CATS, 325 excavators, you could legal on this with, you know, obviously your permits, no problem. Then go haul those scissor lifts, then turn around and go haul freight. Uh, it, it's really the do it all trailer. And if I was just gonna have one trailer again, this would probably be it. I would probably shorten it up and do a tandem axle just because that would be handier for me specifically and what I need it for now. And uh, it, it was a really good trailer. I, I would definitely buy one again because a few things like that outer rail right there has been upgraded. The ramp is just, that's all in how you order it. Um, so I, I would order one of these again or buy one of these again. Um, if I was, you know, in a position to do so. But for now, I'll just borrow mats. So anyway, that is the old 830R. I don't know why it has the number 830R on it when I bought it brand new, but they numbered it 830R for some reason. So that's its number. That's my old trailer that I custom designed and specced. Well, not designed, designed, but custom specced out. And the specs as far as weights and all that could not have worked out better. That was one of the few things that I've ever gotten right in my life, but uh, it actually worked really, really well. So just some detail stuff, and this is a top-notch trailer, easily one of the handiest trailers I've ever had. So yeah, this is just me talking about a trailer, but <laughs> until this lady calls me back to see if I can go get her out of the, the desert, that's all I can do right now. So that'll be it for this one, I guess. And uh, if I get the call to go get that lady, we'll go use this thing. And if not, we'll just go take it back to Matt tomorrow. Either way, thank you guys for watching and we'll see you at some point.